Welcome back to the Weber Kettle Series, brought to you by Fogo Charcoal here on Chud's Barbecue, everybody. My name is Bradley Robinson, and today we're making some foot-long wieners from scratch just in time for the 4th of July, all on the Weber Kettle. Coming up! These are some chuck roasts. Blue. You can use pretty much whatever beef you want for making hot dogs. Usually I go for brisket, but today I thought I'd go for these nice chuck roasts. And in a perfect world, you would have lean beef and fat, so you could really dial in that perfect 80-20 ratio. But we're just gonna wing it today. They got a nice fat cap on, and they got some nice intramuscular fat, so I think these are gonna work out just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these into strips just so they fit into our meat grinder a little bit easier. You could cube these up. Oh, that looks beautiful. But I find the strips work just as well. And there's less nice work involved. So back into the freezer these go for the next little bit while we get our meat grinder set up. <sighs> We're going with a small millimeter die today. While our meat continues to firm up, let's go ahead and get our spices together. Starting with some kosher salt, pink curing salt, some paprika, granulated garlic, some mustard powder, some marjoram, mace, coriander, some celery seed, and some white pepper. And our binder, which is some high temp milk powder. And we're just gonna get that all nice and mixed up. You know the drill from here, folks. In we go with our meat. And you can make beef and pork hot dogs. You can make whatever you want. Chicken hot dogs are a thing. We're going all beef today, because it just seems right. Beautiful cold meat. Get these nice individual strands of meat. That's exactly what we're looking for. And this is about a five pound batch. Hello there. And moving nice and quickly, we're gonna go through with a double grind. This big grinder comes in handy for things like this makes real quick work of these small batches. Oh, that looks beautiful. You know what, while we're here, let's go for a triple grind. That is a sight of beauty, at least to me. Oh, that looks so cool, it's like spaghetti. If you've seen my other hot dog making videos, you'll know that a hot dog is what's known as an emulsified sausage, meaning it's processed and mixed to the point where the fat and the meat become completely incorporated and you end up with a almost meat paste. And as you can see, after that triple grind, this is looking pretty close, but we can get a little bit closer by mixing it even more with our hands or with the sausage mixer. But much like my summer sausage video, this is a pretty small batch, so I don't really feel like busting out the gigantic 50 pound meat mixer. So I'm gonna pop this into my stand mixer with a paddle attachment. Next up, in with our spices, as well as our water. This is really gonna help loosen this thing up and be a lot easier on the old stand mixer here, while keeping our wieners nice and moist and hydrating all the spices. You let this knead until this thing is looking nice and tacky. All the spices are evenly incorporated and it's starting to look like a hot dog. All right, folks, I think hot dog texture has been achieved. Not gonna lie, this is not the most appetizing looking thing ever, but compared to what usually goes into hot dogs, <laughs> come on, it's just beef and spices. And and collapse. My hands are over here. That was kind of satisfying. <laughs> hey, you hear that sound? What is that? Someone in the comments let me know what this animal in the tree over here annoying the hell out of me is. So now I'm gonna go right into the old sausage stuffer. This is weird feeling. It's the old meat moose. Gotta say, this was a lot easier than using the food processor. Looks pretty good. I think we're gonna have some good hot dogs, folks. Smells really nice. I added some more fragrant notes into this one with the coriander and the marjoram and things like that. So we'll see how it comes out. The only problem with making your own hot dogs from scratch is just the amount of dishes. Get that nice and packed in there real tight. Don't want any air pockets, folks. For our casings today, we are going with some of these. These are cellulose casings, which are inedible, and these are the very same ones I used in my very first hot dog video like two years ago. And that's the great thing about these, they last forever. Because if you ever notice, a hot dog doesn't have a casing on it. You know, some of the more artisan ones may be in a sheep casing, but for the most part, the ones you get at the gas station or whatever are made in these. It's a cellulose casing that's just gonna help these sausages get their shape so you can cook them up, and then at the end, we'll peel them off and we'll have some perfect looking hot dogs. So I got my little horn on here, and simply enough, on we go. It's like wearing a raincoat in the shower. Tie it off, and now we case. Ooh, trying to get these nice and plump, folks. You know the drill. I'm just gonna kinda eyeball 12 inches. 
Yeah, that feels about right. We're gonna twist this off, but just to be safe. Let's see how close we came. Ooh, more like a 14er. Nothing wrong with that. And for those of you new to sausage making, these cellulose casings are a lot of fun because they're a lot less gross than using the natural ones. All right, let's see if that's closer to a foot. 11 and a half. Got to get another little chub in there. Boop. There we go. Nothing to it, folks. Just trying to case these up nice and plump. Don't want any air pockets in there, especially because we're going to be taking the casings off at the end. And there we have it. Our first few foot long wieners. Twist it off. Tie this end off real quick quick and there we go some beautiful looking hot dogs and now we repeat and just like that we've got a whole big pile of some beautiful foot long wieners i also decided to whip up some regular sized ones because why not and look at how nice and plump these look love it i'm gonna pop these in my fridge overnight i'm sure you could smoke these off and cook them right now but i want to allow time for that pink salt to do its thing all the spices to hydrate and all the protein bonds to come back together to really give us the best possible bind on these things so when we take the skins off they don't fall apart or crumble or anything like that so into my fridge uncovered they go overnight into Tomorrow, we'll cook them off. So basically what we're gonna try and do right now is a little bit of a cold smoke on these hot dogs. So I got a couple pieces of charcoal here that are slowly getting caught. And once they're fully lit, I will throw on a couple chunks of some pecan wood, then throw the hot dogs on, shut down the lid, and try to keep these temperatures under 200 degrees for a few hours. That way we can get the really nice smoke flavor and color on these hot dogs. On we go with our wieners. All right, looking good. Definitely popped this one when I was casing, but it was right in the middle of all the links and I was not gonna empty that out and try and recase it again. So this is what we're gonna use to keep an eye on the internal temp of these things. Cause I don't wanna be probing any of these other ones. Cause they might burst or start leaching out fat or something like that. But on we go with our lid and it should be nice and smoky in there. Again, really don't want this to get too hot. Otherwise the emulsion of the hot dog might break and these things will get really shriveled up and start leaching out fat and things like that. So nice and smoky for the next a few hours. Three hours later, let's see how these weans are looking. Ooh, looking real nice. Feeling nice and firm. They hit an internal temp of about 145. But most importantly, they're looking nice and smoky and nice and red. Off the pit they come. Into an ice bath. These go. It's gonna halt the cooking process, clean them up a little bit, kind of shrink up those casings so they peel off a little bit easier, and solidify any fat that may have rendered out. We're gonna let these sit in here for, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, and then we pull them off. And there you have it, folks. Some beautiful looking foot longs. All we need to do now is take them out of their casing. Snip the tip. It should just come right on out. Boop. Would you just look at that? That is a nice looking wiener. Tell you what, let's do one more. Oh, this is satisfying. Oh, you guys gotta try this. These are some good looking weens. Got some really nice color on there. The emulsion stayed intact. Oh, that one particularly looking nice and smooth. Does it have the little butthole end? It sure does. And that's how hot dogs are made, folks. Not much to it. <laughs> If these taste half as good as they look, I am gonna be a very happy man. As you can see, my consistency and length is kind of all over the place, but pff, who cares? These look great. I think it's time to grill some off. So as you can see, I've got a little bit of charcoal in here and we are ready to grill. So let's go ahead and throw on our hot dogs. Gotta say, folks, I'm pretty impressed with how these came out. I was worried they might crumble or something like that, but these are looking great. And they're fully cooked, fully cured, fully salted. So all we're really looking for now is a little bit of char, a little bit of color, and a little bit more flavor. I cannot tell you the last time I had a foot-long hot dog, but I'm pretty excited right now because these are some nice, big, long hot dogs. How close did I get? Let's find out. This one on the end is 13 inches, so ha, even bigger. Nothing wrong with that. These are cooking up lovely. They're just getting a lot darker darker as opposed to like burning up or leaching out fat so we can tell that the emulsion is uh holding true very nice getting some beautiful sizzle action looking real nice Ooh. oh gotta love some mustard on a dog folks how about a few onions as well why not and we're not going full Chicago dog today, so we're gonna skip on the pickles and the relish and all that. But if you wanna see that video, check out last year's hot dog video. Made a big old thick boy with Joe M. But there you go, folks. That is a homemade foot-long wiener with real smoke made from scratch using high quality meat. I mean, what more in life do you need than that on the 4th of July? And these are hoagie rolls. I couldn't find any foot-long hot dog rolls. I tried to make 
some earlier and they just didn't come out well. So we're going with these hoagie rolls made by Martin's, obviously. And you know what? I kind of like how they're a little short. You get some pure meat bites and then you get right into the dog. And that is it, folks. That is how to make some absolutely perfect looking hot dogs, foot long sized from scratch at home. I got to say, folks, these are definitely the best looking weans I have made yet. Let's see how they came out, shall we? Oh, mmm, mm-hmm, uh, wow, mm-hmm. That is an amazing hot dog. Texture is perfect. I mean, just look at that. That looks just like a hot dog, because it is one, but it's got real smoke. The flavor profile is fantastic. This is definitely the most hot dog flavored hot dog that I've made. I think it's the addition of all those extra spices, like the marjoram and the mace. Forget all my other hot dog recipes. This is the one to go with. That is so good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That is a really good dog. I mean, it's perfect. It's got real smoke. It's all beef. There's no weird pink slime in there. It's smoky. It's flavorful. Got a nice squishy bun. Mustard and onions on top. Come on. Oh, wow. Gotta say, folks, pretty proud of myself today. Mm. Gotta love those little hot dog ends. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm. Mm. I mean, just look at this guy. Did you have fun last night? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Anyone get that reference? Not much else to say, folks. This is a fantastic hot dog recipe. And it was all done on the Weber kettle. You know, making sausage on the Weber was something I've been wanting to do for a while now. And I think this was a great place to start. And these turned out perfect. I wouldn't change a thing. <coughs> In previous hot dog making videos, I've said that it's a whole lot of work to get something that you can get for 89 cents for a six pack or 12 pack at the nearest gas station. But this time around, I don't know. These are hitting right. These are so good. These are far better than my last hot dogs I made. They've got real beefy flavor to them. Got those fragrant notes. The texture is perfect. Got that charcoal flavor. This is what 4th of July is all about. Highly recommend giving this a try. Get a little cross section action. Nice tight bind on there. How you doing. But without further ado, I think it's time for the official taste test. Ow! When I think of the 4th of July, I'm thinking about hanging out in your backyard with friends and family, growing up some hot dogs on the old Weber kettle. And if you're up for it, I highly recommend making your own from scratch. It's pretty simple, and it's really nice to know exactly what went into your hot dogs. But that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you want to see me cook next. Big thanks to Fogo Charcoal. Thank you for sponsoring the Weber kettle series. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace!